all this week, we're taking you on a remarkable journey that began a couple of years ago. It starts with an unopened box of old films that were nearly thrown away. Now it's a historic discovery. WBIR 10 News reporter Jim Matheny shows us how trash became treasure in part one of our series, Hunt for History, the lost films of Granville Hunt. In the old shed in his backyard, Monty Barger picks up an unseen piece of the past. I got a box of film that I purchased back in the early 70s at a community auction in Philadelphia, Tennessee. Didn't really know a lot about it. Barger can't say for sure what's on the film because he's never seen it. It came with a projector and I was going to try to watch some of the films but the uh, projector I couldn't get to work. I just stored it. As time went on, I just forgot about it. I never did open them again. For 46 years, this mystery box collected dust and damage. Been stored in all types of weather. Didn't know if it was still good or not. Started to throw it away, but just something in the back of my mind said this will mean something to someone. To find out if this forgotten footage is meaningful or even viewable, we took it to professional film archivist Bradley Reeves. Oh, man. A founder of Tamas, the Tennessee Archive of Moving Image and Sound. Oh, my goodness. That's very old film. That's uh, early 16 millimeter from the 1930s. Stuck in a can all of these years. Materials like this, they sort of stew in their own juices and decompose, and usually they crumble to the touch. When I open that can, it's 50-50 whether it's going to be a pile of dust or it's going to be usable. Perfect. 16 millimeter camera, these movies are silent. It's in color and home movie. People were shooting home movies in color even before Hollywood. Let's put it on. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at this. Man, that was fancy. And whoever shot this, definite pro. Look at this, Smoky Mountains, 1939, before the park was actually dedicated. Wow, look at those cars. Beautiful footage. It is, it's a miracle. I have to say, of all the home movies, this was a serious filmmaker. Look how the shot composition here. He knew what he was doing. A lot of the amateur footage just lasts, boom, you know, a couple of seconds, it's real jerky. But this was a filmmaker who had a natural ability. Pristine moving pictures shot by a pro with a rare look at historic people and places. The Kentucky Derby, Gay Street, and the original trolleys. And Gone with the Wind tickets, the Tennessee Theater, movie stars. 1939, here are the Vols playing in the Orange Bowl. Here's Sequoia Hills. Man, look at that telephone. Oh, yeah, here's the backyard. Mother and her child. Wow, wait a minute. Robinson's Mill. Robinson Mill, Tennessee. Loudoun County? They're designing something. Hauling logs on an old-fashioned horse and buggy. This is amazing. Uh, historically valuable. And my goodness, you have to keep in mind that these are one of one. There are no other copies out there. This significant discovery comes complete with a signature. We were able to find out who shot these films. As you can see, this particular fellow here, Granville Hunt. Pretty fascinating. I can't wait to go through the rest of these reels. And there you go. So we know some guy named Granville Hunt shot all of this amazing footage, but who was Granville Hunt? What about all the other people in the film, and what do those places look like today? Well, it turns out Granville Hunt was a bit of a historic figure himself. We'll show you his incredible adventures in Appalachia in part two of our week-long Hunt for History. For WBIR 10 News, I'm Jim Matheny. 
what an incredible find. By the way, check this out. Jim Matheny took pictures from the same angle as some shots in the film and made these slider tools so you can actually move to compare the view today with 1939. Go play around with it. It's uh, on our website, WBIR.com. And join us tomorrow at 6 o'clock for part two of Hunt for History. All I know is that it's sort of a miracle. This long forgotten box of film that was nearly tossed in the trash is now a treasure of home movies from the 1930s and 40s. Most of it is shot in color. Here's a uh, 16 millimeter movie camera, the type which would have shot this film. Back then, you were in the top of the line technology. Professional film archivist Bradley Reeves says what really sets this footage apart is the quality of the film and the photographer. They obviously knew what he was doing. We were able to find out who shot these films, Granville Hunt. You'll find Granville Hunt's grave in Loudoun County. He died in 1963 and grew up in Knoxville. But who was Granville Hunt? Dig through the newspaper archives and you'll see why his home movies are so superb. A professional photographer, he wasn't your average home movie maker. Hunt's career with a camera developed as a teenager in the 1920s. That's when he became one of the first ever staff photographers for the Knoxville News Sentinel. Also worked for a TVA. He had quite a reputation as a photographer. And one of these lost reels reveals rare shots of a place close to Granville Hunt's heart. Smoky Mountains, 1939. Oh, newfound gap. Look at the color on that. That is absolutely fantastic. I was amazed. This hidden treasure, colored movies of the Smokies in its early days as a park. Reverend Charles Maynard knows all about the Great Smoky Mountains. He's written several history books and served as the first director of the nonprofit Friends of the Smokies. Maynard says in the 1920s, Hunt's name was in the news for more than his photographs. He was an expert photographer, but he was also an expert on the Smokies. We found this footage of a teenage Granville Hunt in movies shot by Jim Thompson in the 1920s, when Hunt was one of the best young members of the new Smoky Mountain Hiking Club. And so you get a Granville Hunt, and you get a sense of how much fun they're having. Photography, even at that point, was so new that you've got a Jim Thompson and a Granville Hunt that just developed as the technology developed. And you see how passionate they were about getting the park started, about marking the Appalachian Trail. 18-year-old Granville Hunt and fellow hiker Roy Osmer blazed 128 miles of the brand new Appalachian Trail through the Great Smoky Mountains. It's Hunt and Osmer that go through step by step in the Smokies to find the actual way to do it. The highest point on the entire Appalachian Trail is in the Smokies. It crosses over Clingman's Dome. I mean, you know, you, you really had to work to get to those places. There were no trails. It was this adventure, and they were opening up this whole area. Hunt's lost and found footage in 1939 shows the Smokies 10 years after he marked the Appalachian Trail. And this area was a national park just one year from its official dedication. I mean, it was almost like time travel. Like Newfound Gap, you get to see it before it looks like the way we see it. You can see that it has not even been paved around Newfound Gap yet. It's a view that we would never have seen. But the other thing that jumped out at me was people. You know, people dressed up even to go to the Smokies. It was such a big deal. And there are tons of other home movies that captured early scenes of the National Park. But it is the professional perspective that makes Granville Hunt salvaged film of the Smokies a historically significant work of art. That's the difference here is the quality well shot, the colors are astounding, the shots were composed beautifully. It really captures the beauty of the mountains. I mean, the camera's right here. You're getting to look over Granville Hunt's shoulder at what he saw, and you get this sense of what he was experiencing. 
It's a window in time that sets up our time. So this box of old lost and found film not only has footage of the Smokies in the 1930s, it's shot by a professional photographer who just happens to be the guy who blazed the Appalachian Trail. And that's just on the first reel of film. We have a lot more to show you about Hunt's career as a photographer with rare footage of downtown Knoxville. And we couldn't believe what we were seeing. You're never going to see anything quite like this again. Join us for that in part three of our week-long Hunt for History. For WBIR 10 News, I'm Jim Matheny. An adventurous 18-year-old from Knoxville made headlines in 1929 for blazing the new Appalachian Trail through the Smokies. But at that point, Granville Hunt was already making the front page for a living. Granville worked as a uh, Knoxville News Sentinel photographer. The paper hired Hunt fresh out of high school as one of the first full-time news photographers in Knoxville history. He obviously knew what he was doing, had great skill. The University of Tennessee Special Collections keeps a box of Hunt's newspaper photographs. The collection includes Hunt's explosive story of an assignment in 1933. He's working for the Knoxville News Sentinel and he's going to go out, they're going to do some of the first early stages of the construction of the North Stand. The head dynamite guy explains it's going to be fine, it's going to blow the rock away, and that's definitely not what happened. Instead of tearing away one solid chunk of the cliff, 400 pounds of dynamite shattered the hillside and sent a shower of rocks across the river at Granville Hunt. Granville Hunt had a rock basically explode on him. Boulders three feet wide landed all around him. The flying rock tore the camera from his hand. The rock comes flailing down on him. He did publish that story in the New Sentinel with uh, his photos. Hunt survived the most thrilling 20 seconds of his life with a few bumps and bruises and a new career. The real clincher to the story is that he became a photographer for TVA. TVA had a staff of photographers and they took amazing photos. I kind of in my head have this image of this, these photographers as kind of cowboys, adventurous and some of these photos. I wonder where's the photographer and what kind of condition is he in back there taking this picture. The work that they did is truly incredible. Hunt's professional skill with a camera comes through in these lost and found home movies that were nearly thrown away. Mr. Hunt knew what he was doing. Fade ins, fade outs, that's so unusual for an amateur film. Look at this, a little time lapse photography. And uh, having fun with a camera. And Hunt never let go of his love of capturing current events. When something big happened in news or weather, he shot it on his home movie camera. Movie stars like Raymond Massey coming to Knoxville. Interesting to see the brand new McGee Tyson Airport. The Granville Hunt downtown footage with the snow is really beautiful. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? The Tennessee Theater. Wonderful, wonderful downtown footage. Gone with the wind. The old Lyric Theater, fascinating. That goes back to the late 1800s. We didn't have any footage of the Lyric. Pieces of the downtown puzzle that have been missing. And there it is. You know, you see Knoxville in 1939, 1940. I loved seeing the streetcars. The amount of hustle and bustle. Even the shots of his friends are historic. Here's Knoxville's B.F. Henry who went on to become the longtime editor of the Washington Post. Hunt and his buddies all love the news and sports. The Kentucky Derby, and you find stuff like this, which absolutely blows you away. We couldn't believe what we were seeing. What looks like a family vacation to Florida suddenly strikes gridiron gold. The Hunts were in Miami for the 1939 Orange Bowl and shot color footage as legendary coach Robert Neeland and the Vols won Tennessee's first national championship in football. Not just the games, but the fans, the stands. And Hunt wasn't just shooting movies of the game to watch at his house. He teamed up with Frank Rouser, the owner of a photography shop. 
for a show in the shop window. Granville Hunt would film these games, create artwork, edit them together and show them at public screenings. Long before the days of television, without the work of fans like Granville Hunt, people in Knoxville who did not go to Miami would have never seen this game. It's amazing we have it at all in 1939. And without the miraculous discovery of these lost films, we may have never had this view of history and the adventurous nature of a Knoxville photographer. Incredible shots that no one else has. You're never going to see anything quite like this again. So this old box of film that's nearly thrown away ends up having color movies of Tennessee's first national championship in the 1930s. It's shot by a professional photographer, one of the very first news photographers in Knoxville, and we haven't even told you about his role in World War II or his amazing family. My father was Granville Hunt. Join us for that in our next Hunt for History. For WBIR 10 News, I'm Jim Matheny. The lost and found films of one of the first news photographers in Knoxville logically shows newsworthy people, places, and events in the public in the 1930s and 40s. Granville Hunt's reels of home movies also capture personal shots from home. And several reels of a newborn daughter. That little girl in these movies, we found her in Bowling Green, Kentucky. She and her late husband both graduated high school in Knoxville, went to UT, and became astronomers who led Kentucky's NASA consortium. NASA had been a very big part. Karen Hunt Hackney is now a retired physics and astronomy professor at Western Kentucky University. My father was Granville Hunt, and my mother was Mildred Robinson Hunt. Sure. Mickey is what she went by. They grew up in Knoxville, fell in love, and my dad proposed to my mother in an airplane. So he loved planes, loved flying. Granville Hunt had access to planes as a TVA photographer with a knack for taking shots from above. So this photo is really priceless as far as documentation of those floods, and the aerial photography was also used for mapping. Hunt's photographic gifts developed into a new job in World War II. TVA transferred him to Chattanooga for exciting, top-secret work. A lot of people are unaware of is that we had the Maps and Surveys Unit. Reconnaissance would send the films to TVA there in Chattanooga and make huge prints to make the maps to send back to the war. Hunt wrote the manual for TVA map making and trained his co-workers. But at the time, Hunt was still in his 30s, an expert outdoorsman, and his friends were going overseas to fight. More than once, he tried to leave TVA and enlist for combat. And they never would take him because they said, you gotta go back and keep doing your job. The job that he was doing was so vital. Hunt's team at TVA mapped more than half a million miles of enemy territory and troop movements that helped the Allies to victory. The mapping, if you think about half a million miles of foreign territory, tedious work that you're going to do. The work ethic that he had, that important task that TVA had to do. Hunt's lost film shows some of his co-workers in Chattanooga, as usual, having fun with a camera. There's plenty of footage from home with Granville and Mickey's newborn daughter, Karen Robinson Hunt. Oh yeah, my goodness. You also see Karen's grandparents, Carl and Laura Robinson of Knoxville, who also owned a farm in Loudoun County at Robinson's Mill. The historic landmark. It was a dairy farm. These films from 1940 show the family working on a cabin that became the Robinsons' retirement home on the farm. Building the cabin, I could see him just loving, chopping those indentions for the logs to fit together. Oh, because it was so important to all of my family. We would spend the entire summer there. After the war, Granville Hunt continued aerial photography and mapping for TVA, and 
circled the farm whenever he could. Some of the proudest feelings I had was when he'd be hanging out of the plane with the camera. So fantastic. On summer nights at the farm, Granville gave his daughter another reason to look to the sky. He would show me the constellations and tell me that he was sure that everyone had a star up there. Granville Hunt spent his life blazing new trails, mapping uncharted territory, and capturing light as his profession and passion. And the daughter in these home movies blazed trails as a female astronomy student in the 1960s, explored uncharted corners of the universe with NASA, and captured rare light from the depths of space as her profession and passion. My father, the personality, so very encouraging. Like father, like daughter, written in the stars. It's so much a part of you. For WBIR 10 News, I'm Jim Athene. I like extremes, and certainly the universe is as extreme as you can get. Astronomy professor Karen Hunt Hackney studies the stars, watching the light of the past arrive in the present. Wow. Now she sees the light her father, Granville Hunt, captured on films in the 1930s and 40s. Arrive in the present with images of history and this forgotten filmmaker's sense of humor. There's a shot where your mom and dad, they go and they get on the plane. Your dad waves like he's a like, celebrity. Yeah, <laughs> like Raymond Massey funny. waved when he got off the plane. <laughs> My father, everybody liked him. He never met a person who wasn't his friend. Granville Hunt made history. He marked the Appalachian Trail in the Smokies, became one of the first newspaper photographers in Knoxville, and made the maps for TVA that helped win the Second World War. I know journalists like to say that they don't want to be the story. Reporting, photographing, videoing history and when history comes, then they are going to be part of it. I want people to know how much he cared about his work. Cancer of the esophagus killed Granville Hunt at the age of 54. He's buried beside his wife and her parents, just a few miles from the historic family farm where he shot this footage in the 1930s and just a few miles from the old shed and a backyard in Sweetwater. I'm amazed. Where Monty Barger stored this box of film he never even watched for 46 years. And would not have dreamed that this film would have turned out like this. The quality and some of the pictures of Knoxville. The Orange Bowl, Robson Mill, uh, the building of the log cabin. But you, I mean, you basically said that you almost threw this away. A couple of different times. I'd set it over there in a throwaway pile, and by the time we got through, it always ended up over the keeper pile. Barger bought this box of film in the 1970s at a community auction. It says the man who donated it died in 2001. We'll never know the exact path this lost box of film took to Monty Barger. <laughs> or how they survived the sweltering heat and freezing cold of an outdoor shed. And it's a miracle, number one, that they were shot, uh, number two, that they survived, and number three, that they were able to make their way into the archive. Tennessee Archive of Moving Image and Sound, we're part of the Knox County Public Library. Now Tamas has made digital copies of these home movies, and gave the DVDs to Barger for free. If you donate the film, we'll give you digital transfers. Then they preserve the original film in a cold storage vault. This is where we keep the film that has, has been archived. We keep it temperature and climate control because that slows down uh, the deterioration process. So it should be good for hundreds of years. And this footage is timeless. The detail work Mr. Hunt put into making this film, you just don't see that. You know, like I said, he was ahead of his time. You know, how I ended up with something like this, I'm just so thankful I didn't throw it away. When we discover something like this, it really gives us a sense of community. People should care because it's a view that we would never have seen without his talent. And I would think that people might enjoy seeing how Knoxville looked 
regardless of who took the pictures. For Karen Hackney, it does matter who shot this. Just like stargazing, her focus is on the future. My son is so happy to see them. I'm also looking at it through the eyes of my granddaughter, Olivia, and my grandson, Leo. I like to think about the future. This hunt for history and the story of a talented trailblazer behind the camera gives a generous present from the past to the future. To be able to preserve that and look back means a lot. For WBIR 10 News, I'm Jim Athene. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.